What's up, YouTube? This is Too Raw for TV. Well, it's that time of year again. The time of the year when a media member asks once again to Dr. J who his top five is. No, good and damn well, he's going to say the names of the same players. To my memory, before even looking at this article, I would guess his top five to be something like Wilt, Russell, Jerry West, Oscar, and maybe Baylor. If not Baylor Pettit. It's probably something like that. He grew up watching these players. Those are his top five. They keep trying to nudge him to put, put pick LeBron. And we'll see if he picks LeBron this time. So I'm reading from an article from FadeAwayWorld.net. Julius Irvin selects his top five greatest players of all time, excludes Michael Jordan and LeBron James. So it already answers the question. And here's the audio, I believe, of Julius Irvin giving his top five. Russell's team won the game. You know, so, so, so with Shaquille, now would it be a matter of who wins the matchup or who wins the game? You know, because Russell is definitely on my list of all-time greats, my top five in that in that list of five that I made when I was 15 years old mm -hmm. uh, or whatever. But I got Chamberlain in there too. And I got Elgin Baylor as the aforementioned. Mm -hmm. And I got Oscar Robinson and Jerry West. <laughs> and some people don't even know, you know, they can't remember those names or what those guys did. So when I was 15, those are the ones that I identified with because that was 1965 and they were the men in the game. They were the best in the game. Shaq versus Wilt, man, that's that's a question for the ages. Like Shaq said, he, he, he would take no prisoners. Right. You know, he knows all the records that Wilt has. He knows the records that he has or whatever. It ain't about the stats in that particular game. I think it's about know, being blessed with the opportunity to see two giants of the game, and they could be 1-2 or 2-1, depends on who you're talking to, on the court at the same time. You know, lot, that, that would be a fantasy. A lot of people don't know about this about me. I'm petty. So when I was playing, I was getting close to the world chamber. I wanted to pass them up in points. I already passed them up in championship, but I wanted to pass them up in points because I was going to go, going to go on TV and angrily say, I'm the most dominant big man ever. See, there's a lot of titles out there, the greatest of all time. I never wanted those titles. I wanted the title of most dominant, most feared. So, you know, because I missed 5,000 free throws, because I missed 250 games, I was something. I'm only like 2,000 points away, but I wanted to, like, play one or two more years to pass them up because I was going to say, I'm the most dominant big man ever. I don't want to hear nobody else's name. So now, like, when they say most dominant, it's me and him and, you know, a couple other guys, I, I don't mind that. But that's my only regret with me playing the game. So, Doc, I... Yeah, this, this, you, leave, you leave stuff on the table, man. It's yeah. With negotiations and business deals or whatever, you know, it's okay to leave stuff on the table. Get the deal that you dealt and and uh, go ahead and make the best of that. And Do you get... You have regrets. Yeah. Have stuff that you can't change. I wish I had to... Steph Curry jumper. Right. <laughs> no problem was like you just couldn't see. <laughs> I know one thing. I know one thing. If I lift weights, right? I go to foul line and shoot air balls. Seriously? Yeah, yeah. I could not. I could not lift, lift weights. Like and anytime I saw somebody with a flaw in their free throw game, I think like, too strong. Too hey. too. Thank you, Doc. Yeah, too strong. Yeah. There was a reason. You were the... <laughs> there was a reason, man. I played a little bit more of that because I wanted to hear that part about Shaq and, and Will. Did you hear that about, about, about the strength? Remember, I've said that before. I've said that when you look at some of the worst free throw shooters in NBA history, there's a correlation between strength and being a bad free throw shooter. It, being that strong... It does something to your 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 aim. It, it you first of all, if you got big hands, you don't get a good feel for the ball. And when you're strong, it it messes with your stroke. You 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 
you know what I'm saying? When most people are flicking it, they flick it from a, a it's a person of normal strength. But when you're strong, it's hard to get that right flick, that, that right, you know, trajectory. It's, it's just difficult. So you're very inconsistent. Some nights it can go in. Some nights you can go over for 10 from the line. But you look at all of the guys. Ben Wallace, Shaq, Will, Chris Dudley. Uh, if you, pretty much anybody you can think of. That's why most, most people who are bad free throw shooters are big men. Have you noticed that since Giannis gotten stronger, he's a worse free throw shooter? Same thing happened with Alonzo Warner. Uh, the stronger he got, the bigger and stronger he got, he, his free throw accuracy went down. So that's one of the takeaways. I, I strongly see the correlation between that. That's why some of your best free throw shooters tend to be the smaller guys. Or, or if not necessarily small, Slender built guys. Slender. Have you noticed that since uh, there's more and more slender guys in the NBA, free throw shooting has gotten better? So, anyway, just want to put that up there along with the other stuff. Oh, I got, kind of got away from the, the obvious. Look, Julius Erwin is not going to change his list. That list is etched in him since he was a teenager. He, like you hear it since 1965. Those are his top five guys. See, I don't take it personal that Michael Jordan's now on his list. Because I respect Julius Irvin. The problem with Ledick Licks is they don't respect anybody. They don't respect other people. And they got to start learning, man. People are entitled to their opinions. Now, look, there's sometimes opinions of people who are, I think, you know, are saying some dumb shit. But when, when an all-time great that's respected and respects the game and and, and and people you know people respect Julius Irvin that's his top five you know and the La media kept trying to put pressure on this man to change his opinion he's not going to change it so it is what it is but tell me what you guys think